Thanks, Charles. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Vitamin and Vitamin Talas for Evelyn London Channel. It's all about time lapse travel and tutorials. And today I am making a video because I wanted to make a video because it's been a heavy uh, period and I haven't uploaded anything. And uh, yeah, this is kind of what I felt like doing today. So let's talk about five common time lapse mistakes or five mistakes that time lapse photographers tended to make, including myself. I still make some of these. And I've been doing time lapses for almost a decade, I think. So uh, let's begin. First up, and this is, I think, a mistake for a lot of beginners. Don't just shoot JPEG, shoot RAW. Uh, RAW is the format with which the data is captured. That is the data that is coming out of your sensor in your camera. JPEG is a very small compressed version of that. It's like uh, something gross and small versus something beautiful and big that you can manipulate in so many ways. You have uh, the option to change your white balance afterwards. You can push your exposure up and down so much. You can pull back details that you thought were blown out or were too dark. Shooting raw is an absolute necessity as a time-lapse photographer. Up next is stabilization. Now some cameras are smart and they will disable stabilization when they're on a tripod or when they detect they're on a tripod, but a lot of systems don't have this. And you might have a lens that has an active optical image stabilizer built in and when you put that on a tripod, the camera is all steady and sturdy and you're like, what can go wrong? It is ultra stable, right? I've got a tripod and image stabilization on. What happens though is this active image stabilization starts looking for motion, so it's kind of like, shifting around, resulting in a shaky, wobbly video. And this is also the reason a lot of beginners long exposure photos aren't as sharp as they could be because, because of this train of thought, stabilization, extra stable, you're actually making a mistake. You're ruining your footage by leaving it on. Third is file management, being inefficient with it. It took me a while to figure out how to store all my data and where to store it and how to back it up, etc. I am making a new video about that because my old one is outdated and I really want to update it. But trust me, this is pretty much the only thing, the one thing that I've taken away from going to film school for four years. Be efficient with your file management. Do not just let your data spread out over your laptop or your PC or your computer or your hard drives. Be as accurate as you can with it. Have a system built in that makes sure that you can revisit footage years down the line and you'll be able to find a shot for a licensing opportunity or because you want to reuse it in something or whatever. You've got fluff in your eyebrow. I got fluff in my eyebrow. Great. Better? Yeah. Nice. Sorry, I've been dying to that's why, that's why Amelia works from home. <laughs> Number four. four. Fourthly? Is fourthly a word? I don't know. Anyways. Up next, autofocus. Turn it off. Focus for your scene, lock your focus in, and then switch to manual focus. If you leave autofocus on, chances are high that your remote or your whatever will trigger autofocus for every shot. And sometimes it will miss that. It won't nail the focus and you will end up with a sequence that is pumping back and forth and you can't fix that. It's horrible, your shot's ruined. I did that even, I think about one or two years ago in Hawaii. Um, very sad, very, very bad. Turn it off. Fifthly, I don't know if that's a thing, but number five, do not mess around too much with the clarity sliders, the dehay sliders, all those sliders. They're not good because they apply local adjustments as opposed to general across the entire image. So a clarity is a localized sort of contrast that you apply to an image. If you have something entering that image and you have the same amount of clarity, say 50% or 50 points of clarity added to that image, one will look different than the other. Whereas if you just add contrast, that effect that is applied to those images will be the same. But with those other sliders, because they're non-linear um, applications of a setting, I believe, it just ruins your shot and you induce flickering. And flickering is the one thing that we're trying to avoid as time-lapse photographers. I think I made a video about flickering recently. I don't know, maybe I should do another one. Yeah, I did one about flickering uh, plugins. Look, uh, that's my tips for the day. I hope you learned something. And if not, is there fluff on my face still? If it's not helpful, then uh, maybe the next video is more helpful. The last couple of weeks have been hard. I went through a bad mental health period uh, like two weeks ago, and then uh, George Floyd got murdered in broad daylight. And then I just started following that whole case by the minute on Twitter, and it's 100% affected me mentally, physically. I felt physically unwell, um, and I hope that this is a turning point for the Black Lives Matter movement. If you're about to comment All Lives Matter in the comments, I'll link you some articles with which you can educate yourself and I'll leave some links that you can donate to as well. Uh, next videos will be some more tutorials and there's some hardware reviews and stuff coming up and I'm excited to hopefully get more into a um, consistent rhythm, which is something that I'm forever trying to do. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. See y'all on the next video. Goodbye. <gasps> Wine.
delivery. We just got a wine delivery in that we thought was lost in the mail, but it's not. So happy days. Happy Thursday. It's Thursday as I'm filming this. I'm not sure when I'm posting it, but yeah.